Nancy McGee. I'm the Choral Director for the Performing and Fine Arts High School, and it's my pleasure to be here today with the Handel and Haydn Orchestra and four professional soloists and the concert choirs from Lunenburg High School and Peabody High School and the Performing and Fine Arts Girls Ensemble and Concert Choir, where we're going to perform Francisco Durante's Magnificat and two oratorio pieces from Sampson. Um, for our annual collaboration. We do this every year with the Handel and Haydn Society of Boston, and we learn a major work, and we practice and practice and practice for several months, and then we come together and have two dress rehearsals and uh, one wonderful concert. So once again, this is the Handel and Haydn collaborative concert with Lunenburg High School, Peabody High School, and the Performing and Fine Arts High School of Lawrence. My name is Miss McGee. I'm the music teacher here at PFA. It's a delight to have you all here to hear our collaborative concert with the Handel and Haydn Society Orchestra, soloists, and uh, our guest choirs from Lunenburg High School, the Lunenburg Concert Chorus, and the Peabody High School Chorus, and our own girls ensemble, and our own concert choir from PFA. Go ahead, you can clap for that. <laughs> And I know that you're going to be a delightful and respectful audience of artists, as you all are. Um, we've worked on this music for the past, oh, since around September we started working on it, and I'm sure that the other high schools as well. We've only come together twice. One time, Lunenburg High School came to visit us a couple of weeks ago, and we had a rehearsal. And then this morning was the first time we rehearsed with Peabody High School and Lunenburg High School and us and the orchestra. So things have to come together pretty quickly to put this concert together for you. So I do hope that you appreciate it. Um, it is my pleasure right now to welcome the conductor of the Handel and Haydn Orchestra and Chorus, Mr. John Finney. Thank you very much and welcome to our concert today. We're going to tune the orchestra and then we'll begin with a very short piece by Handel.
I wanted to point out uh, the fact that our orchestra is playing what we call period instruments, which means they are instruments that were either made in the 17th and 18th century or built, they are built as copies of those instruments. You might have noticed if you play the trumpet or if you've noticed people who play the trumpet, normally modern trumpets have valves that they play. These trumpets are uh, copies of trumpets from the 18th century and if you could hold them up, you see they have no valves at all which makes it even more difficult to play. I think the trumpet is a difficult instrument in the first place, but to play it without any valves at all, to make all of the pitch changes by just doing minute adjustments of your lips is amazing. So please give our trumpeters another round of applause for that. Our concert today features works by two composers that were born within a year of each other. Uh, George Friedrich Handel was born in Germany, but he spent most of his professional career in England. And in England, he wrote mostly operas for a long time. He was very well known as write, for writing operas, and um, they were popular for a while. Then it got to the point where people were kind of bored with the operas, partly because they were in Italian. Not everybody spoke Italian. They liked to think they did, but they didn't really. And so they would go to a three-hour opera and really not get the whole story. So it became kind of un, it, not very interesting to go to the opera. The other thing, in addition to the fact that uh, the audience was dwindling, expenses for operas were outrageous. So if you can imagine, when you've seen a musical production, you know how much goes into it. The scenery, the costumes, the lighting. Well, in those days, they didn't have lighting. They didn't have electric lights, but they had candles. And you can imagine the number of candles that were needed to light a stage for an opera production. So the costs of opera got to be insurmountable. And, at, and Handel was about to lose his job altogether until he discovered the oratorio. And the oratorio is like an opera, except that there are no costumes, there are no scenery. It's you get the audience, you get the orchestra, you get a chorus, you get soloists, and you present a story like an opera, but without all of the costumes and the sets and the scenery. You have all the music. So in many ways, I think it's more interesting because it allows you as the audience to come up with your own scene of what it would, might have looked like. What would they have been wearing? What would they have been doing as they are uh, singing praises to this pagan god that they're about, you're about to hear? Um, and also it allows the music to be the thing that carries all of the action. So everything that happens in the words happens in the music. We're going to be doing two pieces from one of Handel's most famous oratorios, Samson. You might know the story. It's a biblical story. Samson was a strong man and uh, kind of ferociously strong. Um, and the secret to his strength was in his hair. He had beautiful hair, long, beautiful hair. And the strength uh, came from the fact that he had long hair. He kept this a secret, and, and only a few people knew about it. Um, but he, uh, his girlfriend, Delilah, who was actually a spy for the uh, enemy, um, she was kind of a double, a double agent, I guess, because she really was in love with Samson, but she also was working for the enemy at the same time. She kind of wheedled this secret out of him. She said, but how, do you, how do you get so strong? What do you work out? What are you, what are you doing to make it? And he said, no, it's the hair, actually. And she said, he said, if you cut off my hair, I won't have any strength at all. So she, Delilah went back to uh, the enemy and said, well, guess what? Give him a haircut, he will have no strength at all, and you can uh, take over his, um, all of his... Um, minions. And so that's what happens. They, they go in, they, they cut Samson's hair off, he loses all of his strength, and um, they take him, the enemy takes him prisoner. He's actually blinded. Um, he's not put to death, but he's blinded because that's even a worse fate than death, to be blind and be in prison. And what the enemy doesn't realize is though, um, because you know when you get a haircut, it, it eventually grows back. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm heading to the barber very soon today because my hair has grown back since the last time I got it cut. And Samson's hair gradually grows back and gradually grows back. And at the end of the opera, um, or the oratorio, Handel is, or, uh, Samson is in the temple, and he's, his hair by this point has grown back. His strength is fully regained. The enemy doesn't realize this. and, and Samson very quietly says, put my hands on the pillars of the temple. And uh, as he, as the enemy is celebrating the victory, hand, uh, Samson pushes 
the pillars of the temple, the whole temple collapses and the enemy is all destroyed. You're going to hear now the beginning of the opera and at the very end, or the beginning of the oratorio, and at the end of today's concert, you'll hear the end of the oratorio. The beginning of the oratorio, the enemy forces are celebrating their pagan god, who is the god called Dagon, and you'll hear um, everybody calling the enemy to order by saying, awake the trumpet's lofty sound on this joyous day when Dagon is crowned king of all the earth. The other composer we feature today is Francesco Durante. He's not nearly as well known as Handel. Handel was probably one of the most famous composers in his day and still remains one of the most famous composers. Durante was working in Italy the same time Handel was working in England, and he wrote, Durante wrote mostly works for the church. This is a Magnificat, um, a setting of a Latin text. You have the translation in your program so you can follow along. It's created as a series of very short movements, we'll do the whole thing straight through. And you'll hear, during the course of this piece, you'll hear the chorus featured. You'll hear our four soloists, and I'd like to introduce them. Erica Vogel is our soprano. <laughs> Carrie Sharon is our alto here. Our tenor is Christian Figueroa. And our bass is Rayshawn Campbell. They all have very uh, uh, short solos in this piece, and we'll now give you the Magnificat by Francesco Durante.
Before we conclude with our final uh, piece today, I wanted to say a special word of thanks to all of these magnificent singers on the stage. It's a pleasure to work with so many beautiful voices and so well trained. I must say the directors of all three of these choruses are to be commended on the beautiful work that they do with these, with these students. And these students are to be commended for the beautiful singing that they do. So I'd like to introduce the uh, three directors. If John Simmons from Peabody could stand so we could give him a hand. Here he is over here. <laughs> And Karen Wardwell from Lunenburg, are you here? And Nancy McGee from Lawrence High School. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful work. It's been a, tr a tricky winter. I know a lot of you have had uh, some days off uh, because of uh, snow. Um, so with all of those interruptions, it's been amazing to see how well prepared these choruses are. We'll conclude now with the final chorus from Samson. This is Let Their Celestial Concerts All Unite. Yeah. <laughs>